What did you say, Michael? When Lou's microphone was not muted, there was a horrible buzzing sound. On full. Yeah, we we heard on our end too. Thanks, Michael. Happy with the way you dealt with it. Lou, if you're hearing us, um, when your mic is unmuted, there is a very very loud kind of background sound. Yeah. Uh, I don't know where it's coming from. If you might have a fan or something right next to your computer, just letting you know. Gives a whole new meaning to be buzzed off. Yep, start record. All right. We now have just achieved our quorum. So uh, good morning, everyone. We will get what should be a fairly short meeting going here. I know. I, I just, I just, I just it. all right. They're yeah, really long meetings. Everybody was thinking it, but no one wanted to say it. Okay. <laughs> Uh, let's start with attendance in the room and then we'll go online. Mike Guida starts off. Uh, Mike Guida, court. I don't count? No. She doesn't count. I'm sorry, Dorothy. <laughs> Dorothy, please. <laughs> Dorothy Banaszewski, Facilities Construction. Holly Hahn, Office of yeah. Council. Uh, Michael Tubiola, Facilities Construction. Uh, David Dolan, Facilities Management. David Porter, Cork. Barbara Myers, Construction Purchasing. Bill Huckel, Cork. Sam Shannon Cork. Oh, we're still going around the room. Hang on a second. Hold on, Sam. Sean Mauer, Cork, Cork Construction. Okay. James Farrell, Facilities Construction. Eileen C, State Contracting. Bob Bliss, Office of Inspector General. John Levinson, Rel Enterprises, representing Zescovich Architects and Warden Smith, General Contract. Renee Ray with Randolph Construction Group. Okay, go ahead, Sam. Now do it again. Sam <laughs> Shannon Dork. Thanks, Sam. John Cheshire's very shortly. Yes, I'm here. All right, Lou Doctor. Here. Yeah. Michael Gelf and present. And Tom Berger. Tom, you still there? Tom mm. Berger, calling once. Okay, might be on the phone. Okay. Oh, we saw he's online, correct? Yeah. Yes, he's on. All right, you're logged in, Tom. Okay, uh, I have nothing to report going down our agenda. Anyone with a conflict of interest or anything being reviewed today? Here. Morning. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, what you saying? Sorry about that, guys. Okay. What were you saying? I was saying my conflict is that we're doing it on the first day of school. I see. But that's not. But uh, that's self. That's, that's not germane. To that's self and legal. Self inflicted. Okay. Yes, that's true. Uh, Cork report. Lou, can you do our report again for us? Uh, yes. Thank you very much. All right. We're already down to staff updates. Mr. Dolan. Um, in an effort to keep everything short, today's the first day of school, um, and uh, knock on wood, we're hoping for a, a good one. We've got a couple of new schools opening, and uh, a lot of great projects, a lot of great work got done this summer. I'm wondering how James is here, because otherwise all the rest of them don't want to be anywhere near here. They're busy um, making sure they're, uh, they have a presence at their school. So yeah, I'm busting your job. Sorry about that. Um, no, but I wanted, again, I want to thank my staff and Michael, Michael staff for all the work that they've done this summer. The amount of effort that they've put in, I mentioned to some of the folks in the room, I have one of my SPAs who has been sick all week at his dealing with his brand new school, but working from home. So, I mean, it, it's, it's all hands on deck to make sure that no matter what happens, our schools are getting taken care of. So um, kudos to um, our construction guys, as well as our maintenance folks who've done, done an incredible job of getting these schools back up and running and ready. Any uh, early morning reports of any disasters? that you need to want to report? <laughs> <laughs> no, we've got a couple of air handler issues at a couple of schools, um, but uh, 
you know, again, like air handlers, it's one air handler out of 17. Oh. So there might be a handful of classrooms that might be offline, um, but uh, they're being worked on. And um, our folks next door at Riviera Beach Prep have one too. So, uh, but otherwise, um, you know, again, no, I won't say that, but um, uh, we're cautiously optimistic that things will continue um, at a good pace. And uh, for us, we're actually considering today the first day of school as well Monday is the first day of school because as we all know, it's quite hot out, it takes massive uh, amount of uh, air conditioning to cool down those spaces with it occupied. So today's a crazy day to make sure that everything works out. But we also recognize that come Sunday night, things stop working again. And we want to make sure that we're going to have a good Monday morning opening. Um, so we're going to have basically re reconstitute the whole first day of school all over again on Monday. Uh, so, but other, other, other than that, we're, uh, we're in great shape. <clears throat> Does our uh, EMS systems automatically kind of shut down Friday night and reopen again, like uh, early Monday morning? They do on schools that aren't being worked on. Like when Michael's got a school that's under construction in the summer or, or even during the, the year, um, they program it to, to run, they'll, full -time. they'll turn it to, to mm -hmm. being full time or um, higher temperature, but run all night kind of thing. So, um, so that they are working on, on making sure we have everything running. Okay. Anything else? No? no. Okay. Barbara, you had something? I did. I wanted to make a quick announcement. Um, we have a lot of um, RFPs that are going to be advertised um, shortly. So I just wanted to invite any of the CORC members who haven't had a chance to participate in those selection committee meetings. You're welcome to, to help us out. And um, I know we do get some participation from Mr. Porter and Mr. Cheshire and Mr. Simon, and um, but they can't handle every one of the meetings. So um, if anyone is unfamiliar with the process, uh, please just reach out to me. I'm happy to give you Selection Committee 101 course and, um, and guide you through the process. So we welcome you. That would be greatly appreciated. Yeah, Cork members, uh, it is kind of part of our duties when you can do it to be part of the selection committee process for architects and contractors. So I know a few of us have done it over the years. Um, so if you can help, help chime in when you get an email, send it back if it fits your schedule and uh, jump in with both feet. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, one, one thing I will mention too, in terms of IT technology, if you don't get your email uh, from Dorothy or from staff by Monday of each of the week of Cork uh, with the package and the link to uh, board docs, then reach out to Dorothy. Um, some people have mentioned sometimes they don't get that email. They never got the package. Something was up with email. Maybe it went to spam. Maybe it just didn't get through cyberspace. So Friday is usually when it goes out and you get that email. Um, if you haven't gotten it over the weekend and by Monday, then please Monday morning call Dorothy or email her and uh, staff will dig into why it didn't get to you. Yep. Thank you very much. Sir. Yep. Michael Gelfand. Michael Gelfand, you had a hand raised. Yeah, I just wanted to give a thanks to staff for the communications on the opening of the Garcia School. There was, uh, for those people that still read a newspaper or know what <laughs> uh, um, it was good, positive, and uh, Karen Brill's comments uh, on the public school system generally were, were very good also. Thank you. Yeah, I agree with that. I've been following that. The, there's one, I think it's Cole. Uh, she's the education reporter for the Post, and she's been having an article in almost every day about something with the school system, yeah. and uh, most of the time it's positive. <laughs> so uh, that is good to read. Okay. Uh, public comments. Anyone with public comments? All right, seeing none. We're down to consent agenda. Uh, FC1. Yes, I'd like to pull that. Okay, um, I also did. PC1. Uh, PC2. PC3. PC4. 
PC4 and PC5. Gelfand. Okay. PC5 as well. Okay. All right. Need a motion to allow the ones not pulled to go forward. I'm pulled to go forward. Okay. Need a second on that? I'll second it. Michael Guida seconded it. Dorothy Polish, please. All right. Porter? Yes. John Cheshire? Yes. Dick Lou Doctor? Yes. Michael Galfand? Yes. Michael Guida? Yes. Sam Shannon? Yes. Tom Berger? Yes. I am Bill Hookill. This is for Sorry, I can't vote. I wasn't in okay. the room. Okay. FC1. John, you pulled it and I pulled it. Go ahead, John. Yeah, Dorothy, excuse me. Excuse me. If you could go to the um, responses to our questions. Okay. The first page. Excuse me. I'm sorry, John, can you speak a little louder, please? I'll try. Right. How's that? Is that better? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, <clears throat> it's the uh, number two there, Dorothy. This got to do with replacing the lift station suction piping. I questioned the cost for that and got the backup on it. And the response was, since the original lift station was not working properly, they thought it was a lift station, but once it was in place, they determined it was problems with the piping. And to access the piping and replace it, the new lift station had to be removed and then reinstalled. My experience with lift stations are if you dig a hole in the ground, you have a concrete box, you put it in the ground, and the piping connects to the side walls of the lift station. So I wonder if I can get an explanation or a better explanation on why the lift station had to be removed in this case. This is the reason James Farrell's not at his school this morning. There you go. <laughs> Can I just talk? Yeah, go ahead. Oh. Uh, Eileen C. State Contracting. So this particular lift station, it's a package. It's a Gorman Rough lift station, it's lift station package. It's kind of like if you think about a big irrigation controller. It sits on top of the wet well. Um, the original thought was the lift station was causing the issues with the priming. Uh, once the lift station was removed, there were still issues with the priming. So we engaged the civil engineer to come out and um, assess the situation. So the suction piping they determined needs to be uh, removed and replaced. So we have to lift the entire uh, lift station off to the side to access the wet well that's underneath it. And then the recommendation from there is to basically rehab the entire wet well, the suction piping, and a, a section of the discharge piping out to the floor main. So the wet well was never replaced. It was just the um, correct. The Okay. Correct. And what, what kind of retrofit did you do to the well? You re re there was nothing the done to the wet well. It was just the package lift station on top. Well, when I when I saw the price, I went back to the original GMP, and I noticed that the uh, new lift station was ninety eight thousand, and the subcontractor provided a price to replace the piping as well as the lift station and his cost to replace the piping at that time was 19000 So I'm curious why staff didn't investigate that further and authorize the piping being replaced uh, originally and would have saved us $86,000. But uh, then, this was prior to me taking over, John. Originally, the cost was basically reduced because of budgetary purposes because they thought it was the lift station that was the issue and obviously the price increase now is because of what has to be done to remove the lift station in hindsight does it make sense now absolutely but the work that has to be done now is driving the cost factor okay thank you my next one is uh i think i got three of them under fc1 the next one is uh starting the next item there item number six grove park remove the 
country casting pads. You could scroll down to the bottom of page two, right there. Yeah. The um, question I asked is, is an explanation of how this happened. And the answer is the low bidder, um, he included in his price the removal of the concrete pads. But the second low bidder was an SBE, so they gave him the job. And they found out later, apparently, that the second low bidder did not have the removal included in his proposal. So my first comment is, so we pay more to have, <clears throat> excuse me, the SBE subcontractor, but we got less because his bid was uh, apparently not vetted by the CM because it didn't include that work. And he um, asked for the documentation from Thornton with explanation. And Dorothy, if you can go down to page, I think it's 17, and see what Thornton had to say. Now, they said during buyout, it was identified the casting beds for the tail panel walls would need to be removed. So that's a little different than the explanation um, from staff regarding um, it just wasn't in the guy's bid. One guy had it and the next guy didn't. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Uh, I can give a little bit more info. So just to be clear, the concrete scope on this project was split into two different parts. So it was the tilt wall um, was did one scope of work and then all the site concrete was another contractor. So the tilt wall person was the one that actually did the casting beds because they were doing the work. So when they got bids from the um, site concrete contractor during the initial buyout, the low bid, they negotiated, they checked the scope and made sure that his scope included the removal it did. Um, and then when they started to look at their SBE points, they didn't have enough participation. So when they went to the next sub that they did not verify with them that they had it included and the sub would not have automatically had it included because they didn't pour the casting slabs it's not on the plans either you know we don't that's done through shop drawings and that kind of thing so the site contractor would not automatically assume to include um, removal of casting beds in their bid so yes. that's why they missed it and it is thornton's miss yeah that what you suggested was correct. It is a yeah. The general miss. contractor should have coordinated with. Didn't matter. It's first, second sub with everybody involved. That that scope needed to be done, um, and they they did not do that till after the fact. So. And then did they not rebid that demolition uh, so that the second yeah, guy didn't actually get it? Yeah, it was. I, I, it ended up being a third party um, sub that did the demo because they rebid that out, and the cost was less than to have the site contractor do it. So. Um, that work, they shopped it around and got the best price they could for that removal of the concrete. All right, thank you. And my last question is, Dorothy, on page um, four, at the top, right there. This had to do with the relocate the irrigation water supply line. Oh, gosh. And the part that bothers me is uh, you, you can read the explanation there, but in the center it says the irrigation designer believed that a one inch water meter was adequate for the irrigation supply and designed the system as such. During construction, it was determined that the one inch meter could not serve the entire middle school site. So, isn't this my question? Is isn't this a design error? Yeah, I think we did. Isn't it omission because they didn't have to redo the work, right? How did we have it classified? I forget. It should be an omission. Um, no, you had it classified as um, permitting agency. Oh, so, I think that was so. That when we first put this on the agenda, our understanding was it was something that the county was asking for. And after further engagement information that we dug into it further and further, we actually did figure out that it was an omission um, because the the entity did let us know that hey. Um, if it's less than a one inch meter, you can direct tie into our line. If it's more than a one inch, you have to do a, a pump out of the but lake. Correct me if I'm wrong. When you say they told us, they told us when we built Sunset Palms Elementary School some time ago. Yes, or was it that was that was during this? They did tell. During they did it about this school. They told us it was an issue. They told us that at one point they said at Sunset Palms when we built that we were going to eventually have to tie in. Yeah. So they were monitoring it, but initially okay. when they first got that email back from them and they said, oh, we're, we have a one inch, we're good to go. 
or less than a one inch. Um, and then once they got to that landscape irrigation design after the fact, which comes at the very end of the design, so was they forgot to go back. between the civil designer and the irrigation guy. It wasn't necessarily a discrepancy. It was the fact that they were tying the direct line direct into the line when they weren't allowed to. They had to go to the lake. Okay. And it's part of the gray water reclamation thing that the county has to require large landowners like schools to use uh, reclaimed water for irrigation. So that's what this is about. So do you want to call this a design omission? I think it should be. Yeah. Well, it's kind of almost a district request as well. It's, it's kind of a bunch of things. Yeah. I mean, that, that was well, the only comment I had on the same thing. Uh, uh, yeah, they were saying you can't tie into their system. And that's, I guess, why it became a permitting agency cause. But I, don't, it's, I don't think it's a district request. I think it's a district policy or a rule that sits there a standard, and the designer should have known that that he's got to do. He's got to use reclaimed water if it's available. And and we are still using the reclaimed water. We're just getting it from a different source. We're having to get it from a, a, a lake. lake that they're pumping the reclaimed water into rather than directly tie into the line. Yeah, that's why the one inch would have been right from the line and the water had to go from that lake. Yeah, that was my only comment too. I this, On this one, John, that's the only one I had a comment on was to say, okay, after I read the explanation that came back through, then it really wasn't permitting agency. Yeah. It's kind of permitting agency slash design omission because none of the extra change would have happened if the designer had gotten the right information. Right. Okay, we can change, too, so we can change that. To, I'll make a motion to um, send FC1 uh, to the board without comment. Michael has raised his hand. Michael, yes. Thank you. I had a question on item 15, Seminole Trails, the contract. Item 15, I don't know what that is. Uh, this is Seminole Trails core expansion. Okay. Yep. Underground. Yes, sir. All right. Um, is there a reason why we only had one bid for this work? I think it was the the, the CM got one bid for that work. Um, I don't know why the CM could only get one, but that has happened before. Yeah, we're, we're seeing it kind of more and more across the industry where we're getting um, lack of bids and we're really having to, the CMs are really having to do extra effort to reach out and not just send emails and get the usual bids, but to follow up with phone calls and question and, and say, hey, you really need to bid on this um, because subs are so busy that they're just not looking for the extra work, if it, especially if it's small scope. Um, to get somebody out there is really difficult. We've even had um, Dorothy has a minor project where it's it's a minor project. It should have been one bit, but it was so bad that we had to do had to break it into pieces and do the first phase because we got good coverage on a bunch of stuff that we needed early. But some of the bigger packages we weren't getting enough um, coverage. We were only getting one bid or getting allowances, and that's just and not acceptable. You know, they're small. sending out. 4,500 emails and, you know, a couple hundred phone calls and follow-ups and still not a lot of participation. Um, I don't know that this particular case, but I know this contractor with every other trade had very deep coverage. So um, they're reaching out, they're, they're doing their efforts. It's just hard to get people to do the work right now. Well, I mean, the other thing that we've always found and it's always been kind of something court hasn't been happy with and staff hasn't been is the length of time it takes to get paid from almost any government agency in the district is one of them. We are. I mean, I'm, you know, if I get a client that can pay me in 15 days, I'm going to take that client over somebody that takes 60 to 90 to pay me. Yeah, and I, I will say that um, we worked hard on that and improved our processes. And if you ask the different contractors around, out of the big entities, we pay the fastest. Oh, wow. Far. Okay. And that's a consistent feedback that we're getting compared to the other school district, other um, government entities. So that is something we work hard, but compared to our private client, yes. And and the other side of this is, I think where you're going with this was that, yes, we may be able to pay our, our prime contractor fast. And I see the guys in the room and <laughs> they get the money right away. But even them, then it takes them five days or whatever to, in some cases, to get a check out. And that's that 15 days you're talking about. You know, we might get them paid in 15 to 20 days, and then it's going to take them another five or 10 days to get the subs. Poor subs don't want to keep doing that. So that's, you said, it's a challenge for working government 
um, how do we get small businesses to remain engaged? We try to improve the process, pay them faster. Well, and it just takes a while if you are paying faster than other government agencies for that reputation to get around sure. so that the sub base starts getting more interested at bidding on school district related work. And everything has to be, again, I, I'm not saying that we, we have to be ultra conservative about making sure that we have all the yeah. T's crossed, and I's dotted, all the backup paperwork on all the invoices and whatnot. And that ends up being a, a kind of a, a burden. And it's, yeah. it's trying to train the contractors and not picking on anybody in particular, but it's trying to train the contractors, make sure that that first pay application, you've done everything. You've asked for everything. You've made sure you've pulled everything together that these, if the subs aren't living up to their end, you need to get on their case, but you, you as a contract, as a prime, have to make sure that package is complete, is, is as thorough as possible. Uh, and in order to keep that going. 90% of the subs did it exactly right. If that one sub did something wrong in the paperwork off, they got to send it back and redo it. So it's there is some back and forth sometimes. And then that right. sub will get X'd off of that month's pay application sometimes. and then come complaining, well, I put my paperwork in, but I, they didn't include me in their pay. Yeah, well, you didn't do it right, like we asked, and we weren't going to hold everybody else up for your. So this is that story that keeps going on. And we have it's a challenge. We have we have reach outs and trainings with subs and general contractors and architects to help them put that together. So we're very proactive with trying to make sure because we want to we want to get them to pay as quick as possible. We want to keep that reputation. You know? Yeah, Leanne Leanne Evans, Miss Evans, I'm sure if she's on, she will be the first to stand on my shoulders and yell. We got to get better at paying these guys because um, she doesn't want to have those same phone calls. She'll get them from the subs that they were not uh, getting paid. That's, that's not the only problem. It's just the the, the yeah. volume of work that's out there for yeah. construction is just you know you can't just demand the same uh, the same subs being interested when they've got twenty jobs ahead of them that they didn't even have to bid. They, yeah. Here's the job. Go do it. Give me a bill. Mm -hmm. Yep. So there okay. are really two different issues that we're talking about here. Uh, one is the bidding process, and then second from hearing is the pay process. Uh, if I can go back to the bidding process, um, I mean, uh, Dave, what I'm hearing is is that the uh, demand just totally outstrips supply, and there's not really anything that we can do about it. Right. Yeah. Uh, Correct. Uh, is there anything that we can do beyond the pay to make our jobs more attractive? No, and it comes down to the CM. I mean, if a sub doesn't want to work with a particular CM, they're going to say, no, I'm not bidding to you. Um, and that sub base gets smaller. Um, a, a lot of subs will, uh, you know, want to work for particular GCs because they're treated well. The jobs are managed well. They don't have to get out there three times to do the same thing. The job's ready when they get there. So, you know, a lot of that is the nuances of the construction business. And so, you know, if you're a sub and you've got all sorts of work ahead of you, you're going to pick and choose the guys you want to work with. Is we can't control any, that. Is there anything in our selection process? No. Deal with sins that, you know, are slow pays and that are just SOBs? <laughs> No, I think staff manages that well, um, and that's nothing in the selection process. I don't think that would even come out in terms of a, a scoring criteria. Uh, you know, other than a cork member, everybody on the selection committee is a staff member that has worked with the whole process, uh, the SPAs, um, and First. they know internally, you know, who's paying people quickly, who's not, who they have to stay on top of. So. I think we're doing everything we can. I don't think there's any, you know, major changes that are needed to improve it. It's just the nature of the beast that's out there in the world right now. Well, the market is really saturated right now. And we looked at this a couple of weeks ago. We've got at least 35 FCA projects going on right now, plus the ton of minor projects that I've got. And, you know, we have the people who regularly bid on these projects can only do so many of them. So they're just stretched thin at the moment. We had some bids come in yesterday and I asked the C CMAR, you know, why did you get such little participation? What else did you do? And and they were like, we've done everything we can. We've, we've called, we've emailed, we've, we've gone out and you know, this is all we could get. 
Yeah. One of our better CMARs. And, yeah, it's not one CMAR we're hearing that from. It's, it's everybody. Yeah. Well, and it's even in the private sector. It's not just government work. I mean, all, all the jobs I've got going, Michael, I get the same thing. A guy missed, uh, you know, getting a concrete slab ready, and so he had to postpone the concrete. Well, it was three weeks later he was going to be able to get back on the list. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, it's just crazy. So then beyond crazy, then uh, moving to cash. Yeah, I know um, it's going there next. Times then, um, is other than some of the document or the documentation that's required for statutory items, such as, you know, the employee's background checks, which I presume we get before they start. Is there yeah, yeah. anything that we can learn from other large contractors for other jobs? that can make the payment process or the approval process actually. <laughs> yeah, and we do that. Um, we have a, a living checklist that we go through and we just went through an overhaul about a month and a half ago where we updated that and removed some items that didn't need to be on there, streamlined some other items, added some information that we were missing. So it's it's constant. We're always looking at making it a more streamlined process. So. And saying that with the, the IG in the corner and making sure, but <laughs> we're always making sure that when we review these things, that there's certain things we cannot sidestep. We can't go around and, and, and we certainly know, can appreciate how the private industry goes, but there are a lot of things that we, we have to live by. So like, you know, we're, we're not, we're not going to be able to deviate too many. I know some of our contractors have gotten us we have a checklist that's you know 19 items long. Really? Do we provide the checklist to the uh, to the subs so they know what's out there that way and so they can prep beforehand. Barbara sent yes. it out with the yeah. package. Yeah. It's part of the package that's posted even when the RFP is posted on BidSync, so they're well aware. All righty, thank you. All right, back to uh, FC1, we had John with a motion, and I think we needed a second. Need a second? I'll second it. Second by Mike Guida. All right, any other comments, discussion? All right, Dorothy Polis, please. Bill Hukio. Yes. David Porter. Yes. John Cheshire. Yes. Lou Doctor. Yes. Michael Gelfand. Yes. Michael Guida? Uh, yes. Sam Shannon? Yes. Tom Berger? Yes. Thank you. Okay, uh, PC5. Um, Michael and Michael. Michael and Michael. Michael G. And Michael, Michael Guido, go first, please. Um, on page 20, I guess this contract is broken up into two phases. And when I was looking at the cost for each phase, I noticed there was a lot of uh, allowances for uh, line items. And Jim Lasseter, Johnny. Oh, thank, thank you, you. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Lasseter. And then, um, so I just want to know who determines what the allowance is during the bidding process. And do yours, all the bidders carry the same amount of allowance throughout the whole uh, bidding process. No, that's, that's so in um i don't recall this one in particular um you know, page allowances. you'll see there's a summary of allowance of seventy thousand dollars sometimes that it's determined up front especially early on because this is um the phase one if we don't have enough information we do an allowance until we can get more information that way it's covered at least the scope so who's determining the allowance a lot of times the, the architect and engineers determine what needs to be done in, in conjunction with the cm though um, stuff that needs more investigation, that kind of thing. Uh, Dorothy, what's an allowance in this particular one? So we could speak. Page 21. 70,000. Four. I think in general, Michael, I believe it's the CM that will, the allowance is in there. When something is not clearly defined by the time they get to pricing it out by the drawings and the specs. Yes. And I was going to say, because ultimately, as Mr. Porter just mentioned, the challenge is if if we have an allowance set in that GMP and the price comes in higher than that allowance, we can't use contingency. We're not allowed to use contingency to cover that overage for the allowance. It's basically the presumption of when you put that money, that value in this GMP, it had better be enough to cover whatever that un 
okay. unclarified scope might be. So that's why, the con as you say, the contractors do play a bigger role because they know that, you know, guaranteed maximum price contract, they don't want to be held uh, mm -hmm. to cover that overage. And the, on the allowances, they don't get, uh, you know, they, there's not the profit built in there. So they get paid based on actual work as they use it. So there's, you know, so there's a... So a portion of that, if it's not all used, it gets returned. Is, is going to be returned. Right. Because that answered my other question that I was going to ask about. Does contingency have to cover any overages on the uh, on the allowances? That was written in the policy. Um, and I, I don't even, I wasn't even here when it was, so Dorothy, I can't speak to it. But it was something that it's it's a challenge for us, but it's policy and we follow it. We have to. Well, I think the idea was we didn't want to see the nickel and diming it look like coming right. back from allowances. Like, no, if you need to make an allowance, make it high enough that you're right. going to really cover yourself. Yeah, the presumption, if you put an allowance in just to make it look good for the board and then come back and say, oh, I need another 150000 and I'll take it out of consideration, that, that's disingenuous and the board wants to know up front. Be right. Be accurate. Be as close as you can without be going over. So don't allow them to use contingency. So it makes sense. I guess your point. They just would not like coming back for an extra, but they love getting the credit back. Yeah. It's just like any client. Mm -hmm. uh, last question. Um, I, I'm trying to figure out what the scale of work is on this contract, and I have no drawings to look at. So I, there's really. Um, oh, PC5? Isn't this the, the return? PC5, like? I think, is the one where we're... This is for Winbrook Elementary. Yeah, this is the return on the, on, the, on the early phase work. Yeah, the way I read this one is that we had an original <laughs> approval, and now we're ba backing it down just to get the early purchase stuff done. Yeah, so it's basically the HVAC equipment and switchgear is what it was. And originally, we were going to do all the concrete work with it. Um, but with the delays of the other schools that we had, this one can't get going in time. So the schedule isn't as critical as it was before. So now we're able to back it off to just the long lead time equipment. And then the next GMP will have the rest of the work. So there was no reason. Basically, There's less risk when this got it. approved for the early work, it was going to be all the all the equipment, the, the big equipment and the, and the concrete for the early work, you know, installing so, you know, the, the pads and, and whatnot. Um, but that was the presumption if we were starting on June 1st. We, at the time when we pr processed this GMP, we thought we were going to start work on June 1st. As it turned out, because the other schools got delayed, which we know we're trying to open up in late October, because those schools aren't done, we couldn't start this one. We're not going to start this till December. Well, now that it went from instead of that concrete being poured in June, it's now not going to be till December, January. It says, you know what, we're, we're not going to hold that. We're going to pull it out, and that concrete work will be part of the overall GMP when we come to you in November or whatever with that uh, with that final all-encompassing all GMP. Um, it was simply that. It was a matter of the timing. That's what this is trying So you're leaving the switch gear and mechanical work in there because that's going to take past As, December to come in. And that's <laughs> the, that's the equipment only. Yeah. Equipment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Okay. Michael Gelfand. So as we concentrate on the, if I may just grossly say the mechanical side, um, I'm going to come back to an issue that I've raised before, particularly as we're dealing with a modernization of very large scope. Uh, and that is, uh, has there been an effort to cost out what it would take to build the walls around the schools, the sound ports, and the security <clears throat> items? I thought that was deferred. The, the board needed to decide whether that was something they wanted to study. I thought, Michael, we had mentioned that before, even when uh, Mr. Burke was here. Yeah. And I believe he said, you know, that would be something the board would have to give directive on whether that was something they wanted to even have staff price out. So I think that's where that request was left. It is. I don't know if we got a response back and the board has been you know, told about that discussion, but I don't know if we can do anything more on that. Well, uh, and I don't know what. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say I don't know if the board has been briefed on the current design. I'd have to check with uh, school police. And I thought there was a, a mention that it had to be done as a unanimous board um, question, so it had to be voted on to bring that to the board to ask, not just to. It had to be a separate cork item where the cork board voted and agreed that that's something they wanted to take to the board to consider. 
Yeah, that is true. I think Mr. Sanchez had even mentioned that, that for them to take something, them being upper management, something to the board, it needed to be an actual voted on uh, positive vote from Cork of all Cork members. And so, you know, motion and approval uh, for them to have something to go to the board with, not just a discussion item. So on two separate paths, if I may, uh, one generally on the issue of modernization, um, suggesting or requesting that this be done because of the, not hypothetical, but the actual threats to those who are within the schools and the absolute obvious uh, uh, history and design of security systems where you don't wait until someone gets into where you're at before you take action. You create perimeters to keep them out, multiple perimeters. And, you know, we're now dealing with, the, I don't know if you saw the headline this morning, but in Uvalde, the place, the school in Texas, uh, a relative of the guy who slaughtered the folks in the school was just arrested for his threats to go back to the schools and you know, hold things up. And I think it was either, was it Vero or Indian River? We've got school teachers who are bringing guns onto school grounds. Um, this is a serious issue that we just can't shunt aside on it. The second part is, is that Cork did vote and asked for what the costs were. Uh, and as third point is we left it with the superintendent. He talked a whole lot. We heard information from staff but we were not shut down, all right? Uh, the school board, I'm not aware of where they have to approve items from us. This is part of a construction project, just in the same way that we wanna make certain that the HVAC provide a safe, uh, healthy uh, place for our students. The barriers to get into the school is the same for a safe and healthy place for the students. Um, you know, you can vote me down if you want, but I think every single one of you knows that in this day and age, to the extent that the legislators are going to say you can carry guns anywhere, and we watch at the phenomenal numbers, including skyrocket, <clears throat> of your perspective on rights to bear arms, we need to be in a position protect our abilities and especially the valuable in beyond any type of estimate of the lives and health of our teachers and our students. Michael, it sounds like you should be making a motion on this one then if you want. Make a motion that uh, we have no objection to the board approving so long as uh, the district considers uh, constructing perimeter walls and sally ports for security surface to, to safeguard our teachers and students. Second. All right, further discussion? Yeah, I, won't be, I won't be supporting that only because it's, it's so far outside the realm of this particular request for the GMP. So that's just, again, my opinion. Uh, any other comments or discussion? All right, then Dorothy Polis. Bill Hukill. No. David Porter. No. John Cheshire. Yes. Ken Lasseter. No. Lou Doctor. No. Michael Galfand. Yes. Michael Guida. Uh, no. Sam Shannon. No. Tom Berger. Yes. Six to three. Three S's. Six no's. One, two, six no's. Five. Right, six to three. I'm sorry, the motion fails. We have another motion. Okay, we need another motion to allow this one to go through as written. Have the motion for PC5 to be mo moved forward with that. All right, we have a motion. We need a second. Second. Second by Ken. Any discussion, comments on that motion? All right, Dorothy Polis, please. Bill Hukio. Yes. David Porter. Yes. John Cheshire. Yes. K. 
Ken Lasseter? Yes. Lou Doctor? Yes. Michael Galfand? No. Michael Guida? Yes. Sam Shannon? Yes. Tom Berger? Yes. Okay, Michael, your uh, reason for Lou's report for your dissenting vote? The project to ensure a safe and healthy school fails to include a most critical component, school safety. Okay. All right, we are done with the consent and we are continuing down with our agenda. In progress work. Okay. Wow, that's supposed to be a thought I had these on mute, sorry. Um, uh, Dorothy, if you want to throw that up there, again, um, I, I will say like I often do, I'm not going to do this for long, and I will literally only touch on a couple because I want people to just see that. Um, what I realized this morning when I was reviewing the uh, slide presentation that I would make, the photos and the narratives that you see. I, I, it's not attached to the agenda. Only told me she had attached it. I thought it was. Yeah, she said she did it. Okay. Um, the, the, the difference between what you see on the slides, the pictures and some of the narratives, uh, were probably about a week or two ago. And in fact, a lot of these things, you know, again, I, I can't impress my, uh, um, the, the amount of work that's been done in the last two weeks is incredible. Um, so it's not even representative of what you see. Um, so if you want to go to the first slide there, um, those are percentages uh, for uh, progress, still maintaining good percentages. I know we're coming up on the slide shortly that has the pro uh, projects that are coming up. Again, I remind everybody, yeah, go ahead. You can I want to remind everybody that that slide, it, this whole presentation is online. So if our consultants and our contractors want to get on there and see what's going on. And as well, I certainly know that uh, Barbara has, uh, her team is, is, is aware and ready for all of these as they're coming forward. So uh, next one. Um, for This is the slide for you guys. So do you guys see what we're going to be, uh, you committee members get to see what we're going to be bringing forward. Uh, Winbrook phase one. Uh, now you just saw that we nothing in that. September. Um, yeah, we're kind of hitting a, uh, a, a there's there's a month and a half lag from when things get on the board from what what it takes to get them. And as you can imagine, those people that are supposed to be working on things right now, they're working on schools. So we're kind of fo heavy focused on that. So we're going to end up missing a little bit. But uh, it's not having any impact on our yeah, schedules. Fine. They're all, all as we'd anticipated. It's um, kind of like we already built in the, the fact that we know we're not going to be yeah. doing a lot of work. Roosevelt. I think the last time anything was mentioned here about Roosevelt, things were still up in the air as to a, a totally defined scope. Well, we've got a, uh, with Roosevelt Element, uh, Roosevelt Full Service, yeah. uh, Historic Roosevelt, um, we are having a, uh, we're, uh, the board member for the, the, the region, the district is going to have a, uh, a town hall um, August 23rd. And um, we are going to give them a briefing on where we stand on the project. Uh, we we refer, refer to it as phase one. Phase one is the uh, portion of the, of the property that the school district will primarily be focusing on, which is um, a lot of the adult ed programs. Uh, phase one includes renovating the gymnasium, so it will now be a, uh, a facility that can be used by the community as a community center, that kind of thing. Uh, we also are uh, renovating uh, what was the old um, welding lab and uh, building a new two-story, 20,000 square foot uh, building. It's all very condensed in a tight little area. We call that phase one. That work is proceeding as, as scheduled. We are gonna do our early procurement in October, and I think around the turn of the new year, um, we're gonna do our GMP, it might even be December, that we're gonna be doing the, the GMP. So that work will go on. It's gonna take about a year uh, to start to, to get uh, done, and it will be predominantly an adult ed uh, driven program. There's a series of academic programs that are planned for it. We'll present those on 
on August. So we've been working with the community for years on it. Mm -hmm. Continue the same programs. Uh, the good news is on that on this particular property, we're building the spaces as multifunctional. Okay. So it's the kind of thing that if if right now it's it's a uh, uh, a certain type of class in in an engineering class, it we can be transferred over to being you know uh, an IT class or a technology class. Um, they're they're multi multi function. It's not. We do have cos. I think we do have a cosmetology here. That's, That's the, the only that. one that is. It's going to be <laughs> cosmetology, and it will always be cosmetology. But otherwise, um, it is moving forward uh, quickly. Like I said, you can see we're going to have GMPs uh, coming out very shortly, and all of next year. We we will be constructing it and we hope that I, I want to say by the end of next year or turn of the new year, we'll have it done and open. And we'll say that adult ed coordinates with like the, you know, Palm Beach State College and what they're offering and, and kind of around the whole county, look at what the offerings are to make sure it's, it's strategically done to offer the best for the adult education program. Yeah, my only, my only concern was without hearing all of that. Yeah it was still kind of okay we're building something but we don't really have a solid education plan and oh no so we yeah why are we building now phase two is a little different phase two we have an idea of what can go on the site but after that community meeting we'll get some input yeah. on what that is so that's up in the air phase okay. two and phase one you're absolutely right Good initially point. there was a um talk around of what uh <clears throat> what might go there what might be uh the the vast majority of the i want to say it's 28 30 thousand square feet worth of space the vast majority of it is um, multifunctional. It can be any number of different things. And there are a long list of each classroom has a list of, let's say, six different programs that it could be at any given mm -hmm. time. Um, and really, that, that's a function of, that's not my area. Right. That's a function of adult ed telling us what's the need, what's the warrant for the community at the time. Uh, so that's that piece. And then, as Michael said, phase two is the portion, let's say, on the east side, which is Tamarind. So uh, we don't have a plan for that. Um, that's, as a matter of fact, that's the historic buildings. That's what I was getting at next. And so we are reluctant to commit to anything at this point. We we know we want to work with the community, make sure we address their needs, their concerns. Um, but um, we've got some ideas of things we might want to do. Um, we just don't. We don't have a finalized plan. Plus, we also have questions on who's going to fund it. Who's going to build it? Who's going to operate? It, things like that. So depending on what functions go in that phase two section of the campus, still lots of up, uh, items up in the air. But again, that's 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 not uh, contingent on on teaching kids, uh, teaching adults. <laughs> Sorry, kids. No, but it's our buildings, right? The, it uh, would the historic building. That at this point, the district is uh, taking the mindset that it would they would be our buildings. So we would whether or not we fund them, but they're on our property, that kind of thing. So yeah, it's. A, as I said, there there is no set answer on the phase two. Yeah, and I guess that's what I was still thinking of. I mean, I would, I would have thought for the community's sake, we would have worked on the historic existing buildings first to bring those up to good looking standards and function, well, as Jim, opposed to going in there and maybe another yeah. ten years from now, those buildings are still dilapidated and we got a brand new shiny building up. Well, there. I, I, the superintendent does not intend this to be an, another ten years. It's a. Okay. Um, we're building this one now, as, as Michael was just about to say, we're working on, we are in fact doing the gymnasium, the historic gymnasium is now being refurbished and, and to, with the intent of being able to carry some of the his, historic remnants um, in it as more of like a presentation of a museum. But um, the other piece, the phase two piece, the superintendent certainly has an intent to do something with it okay. in the near future based on what everybody wants and needs and that's that'll be the challenge the, i'm not going to pretend that this is an easy walk because there's lots of different wants and needs and um opinions and, yeah opinions and who's going to pay for it and who's going to operate it these are certainly yeah. challenges risk management issues and things like that so uh there's a lot to be said on that and all i'm putting it out there is that we are moving it forward we're, that's why we're going to have that community meeting our board member for that uh, district is going to be uh, spearheading it to try to get feedback from the community. So we are going to move that. So we're going to we're going to we're going to build what we know, and we're not going to build what we don't know. Not yet. Right. We're it, hope, but hopefully in the near future. And again, you're talking to a guy who my my goal is. Oh, you want to build something? I'm, call me in. I'm the guy. So right. yeah, I, I'd love to see it go. I want to. I want to. I want to get going. I want to do things. When things are determined, even prior to telling you to go ahead. I'd like you to come back to us and say, okay, here's our firm plan and all the players that are involved, and now we're going to put it out to architectural design. 
Well, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. And and maybe it's a, something that uh, you know, the chair and I can work with offline, but we have a long-term master planning concept. There's a gentleman, George Perez. Yeah. George is kind of helping me lead the charge on that with Michael. Uh, we meet regularly and we're always talking about retweaking how we do things and where where the capital plan is going in the future. I know with, with ISOC as well, it's a big, big deal. Okay. Uh, but we can certainly do something like that in the future uh, for this body uh, to kind of just do a briefing on, on where we stand. Yeah. Some of it may not be fully vetted, but at least you know that yeah, we're on the, we the cards. I don't think we need to know that. At least okay. I would like to know, you know, prior to you coming to us with, uh, you know, we've GMPs. picked our architect yeah. and here's our GMP. It's like, yeah. just like I'm questioning now, wait a minute, I thought we were still up in the air. And, you're giving me more information than we had been updated on before. That's okay. all. Well, we definitely had um, more academic programs before, and now it's it's solidified. We, we know. What well, we're this gonna, is, I think, the first time I'm hearing that adult ed is way more involved. And I think previously oh, yeah. it was thought of to rejuvenate the school into a community school, not necessarily an adult ed. Yeah, community no, school. it's always been uh, for the last five or six years, it's always been, it was going to be an adult ed primarily with the possibility of 11th and 12th graders coming in for some like choice level type okay. classes. Uh, but I'm not even sure if that's even really going to be. We're working with Dr. Johnson, General Johnson on that portion of it, but it's uh, it's more of a low key portion uh, that the, the primary is adult ed. Okay. Just keep us updated. We'll do. Okay, moving on. So, so much for me not talking no, a lot. No, no, it wasn't. Stuff. I had the question. <laughs> but um, I'm not going to go over these things. You guys can read them. There's a lot of stuff that's still in development. As I mentioned, George Perez and his whole team, we've got a lot of work that's coming through um, uh, going forward. Um, and quite happy about that. Next slide. Um, also, GMPs that are rolling forward. Okay, our facility renewals. Uh, again, I'm going to scroll. We're going to scroll through every one of these because I think there's eight pages worth of um, little things of what's going on on these schools. And I think Dorothy, would you say we had thirty some odd uh, facility renewal projects, thirty four facility renewal projects at, at, at different stages of completion? So you can see some of the photos. Again, you guys are welcome to scroll through these. Go ahead, Dorothy. You can just stay on them for a quick second and. Let's go on through. Okay. All right, Garcia. Um, you'll notice that the last line there said TCO is anticipated this week. Yeah, TCO, <laughs> yes. Good news, TCOs were all all acquired. Yes, er, um, everything is up and running. The uh, the even even you'll if you look at the the I think one of the photos actually has the stadium field. That the uh, um, the G is partially cut in there. You can see it's oh, kind of yeah. not quite yeah. there yet. Yes, it is complete now. Um, this, this morning I was watching the aerials from uh, uh, CBS News that had, had the, the uh, situation completed. So um, the vast majority of the site is complete. Uh, we, um, As a matter of fact, you'll notice on those, it looks like the baseball and softball field aren't <laughs> sodded. The softball field is complete. The baseball field was being sodded yesterday. All that, all that is the base work that goes in advance of. I just thought we started a new sandlot leak. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, but the baseball field, uh, they started the sod yesterday. So, um, uh, and again, the football field is just about ready. Uh, the practice field has been ready for weeks. They've been, the football team has been practicing on their, um, on their turf, on their sod, uh, practice field. So we'll have seniors here. Not this year. We have uh, freshmen, sophomores, and juniors. So this it's a year. JV football team. I believe it's a high school senior. It's a senior high school team. Okay. I don't. You know what? I be honest with you. I don't know the difference between. Like, can you have a high school football team without seniors? I'm sure you can. Well, you probably can, but that's what I'm thinking. It's just JV. If there is, it's not. Something. There was a news article about it the other day. It's a, uh, and he's excited. The coach is excited. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Berger. That that's uh, I wasn't even wasn't uh, certain of that. But um, so, Tom, is it a is it a full football team to compete against all the other high schools? Yeah. 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 Let's see. Wow. Yeah. Little uh, <laughs> short staff by not having any bigger seniors. Okay. <laughs> well, actually, I was in the school last Friday walking it with Angel, and two of the kids came in walking with football helmets. Uh, no, they're they're quite they're, big. they're quite well sized. <laughs> I mean, I look like a midget compared to the both. Wow. So, um, Are you a man from Bohokie. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, these kids are big. So okay, um, but it's a great school. Looks beautiful. Um, next one up is uh, uh, West Point Middle School. Also, 
uh, this is all old. Yeah, all the TCOs were received um, for all the buildings. Uh, the turn lane is done. Um, all the buildings are operational. Uh, we've, uh, and I just got the, the feedback from Aaron on the traffic for the drop off this morning uh, on that school. And it looks like it went well. It went quite well. Good. But they actually had the, the official time, I don't know, it was 12, 9 15. They said all the cars were already gone by the time that uh, they um, loaded up. Um, and my, my understanding is this I believe this is a full. Sixth, seventh, and eighth this year. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I'm, I'm certain of it. I know somebody who's a teacher there. That's an eighth grader uh, has her has eighth grade classes. So, um, uh, all all the amenities that we anticipated and uh, uh, quite well coordinated, um, except for our irrigation pump, um, <laughs> but quite well coordinated with all, all the agencies to get this up and running. What, what corner is that on? Where is that located? It's it's called Joe Bruzo Road. It's um, it's uh, Acme Dairy and Boynton Beach, and then there's the road to the park. That's called Joe Bruzo okay. Road. So the road there on the right is that's that's, that's Joe that's Bruzo. Bruzo. So it's a county park to the right. To of the, the right park. of it, yes, yes, that's right. And again, you can see the track is is not. It looked like it wasn't um, right. uh, lined, but it is now because this photo was probably a week and a half old. Uh, Grove Park um still moving on it's i'm just gonna say we're grow park and maluka are coming i know i think the chair is sitting next to me shaking his head because he knows he drives by it all the time um it's coming they yeah, are they are saying, moving moving you, along you keep saying end of october and i keep looking back going okay right right notice the follow-up follow-up always says by christmas okay well that's better <laughs> yeah well actually yeah this um, at the latest, it should be Thanksgiving because over Christmas we were anticipating moving the new kids into the holding school. So that's why. Oh, I see. You know, at, okay. the, at the worst, we're, we're looking at October 16th. And, and I know for a fact that the principals would say to us right now, fine, if not October 16th, then how about the 23rd? Oh, and if not the 23rd, how about the 30th? They'll take it as soon as. Yeah, they don't care if there's a day off or not. They want to right. move in. They want to get in as soon as possible. They'll move over. We're moving over a weekend, so. Well, if you, if you had the kids in there do the painting, they'd only be able to go up four feet high. So then you have to get somebody else to go up higher. <laughs> okay. Moving on. we got Maluka. Same thing. Um, I, this is where I get to – I have Judd um, does Grove Park and, and, and James does Maluka. And James <laughs> is two weeks ahead of Judd. So we get to pat James on the back and say, keep it up. So he's, he's – uh, they are as well moving forward quite quickly on it. Um, by next uh, two weeks, we should have asphalt down at mm. that site. So, yes, it'll start looking more and more like a, a developed site. Pine Grove, um, that one just got started. Um, they're just doing excavation and underground work. Uh, go ahead, go to those photos. You can kind of see. For those of you kind of wondering the big picture on this, the big square up in the top right there, that's building one. That's going to remain. That's where all the kids are now. Hmm. They're all going to occupy there. Buildings two, that one right there with the black roof, and building three, the low, those both are going to be renovated. And then you can faintly see the footprints. Oh, yeah. yeah, that little kind of Z-shaped, yeah. I guess, kind of looking. Mm -hmm. That's the new building that will also be constructed. So that building will be constructed at the same time we're renovating two and three. Mm. And then at the end of this school year, those kids, or well, start of the next school year, those kids will move into those these buildings, and then we'll knock down building one and turn that into the parking lot. So if you guys can visualize is there, that, is there any site room for playfields? Oh yeah, that, that's part of the that's part of the. So your parking lot and playfields will be in and, that area. And there's playfields back behind the building that you're okay. seeing there. All right, you know, the the one that's going to be constructed yep. to the side there. Okay, sorry, I know you guys can't see what I'm pointing at. <laughs> okay, Delray Full Service as well. They're, they're, we've been challenged with some of our, um, I'll say, some of the agencies that we deal with. Um, I'll, I'll leave it nice and generic like that. We're working through our challenges, um, and I've, I've basically put the team on notice. We're, we're going to have this thing done by, by the uh, turn of the new year, if not sooner. Yeah. Um, what you're seeing here is these, these are the modulars. There's modular classrooms we're installing adjacent to, you know, to, there's that, there's the site. You can see the gymnasium is the bottom center right there. Um, we have, um, the new buildings up at the top. 
Nope, that's Left. no, that's no. the uh, no. that's the that's the new building right there. And then right in front of it, we have modulars, groups of modulars um, that are part of the adult education portion or continuing education. Okay, Del Prado core expansion. This cafeteria, we actually got our CO. Uh, Joel is so happy he got a CO <laughs> yesterday. They are serving food today. <laughs> Exciting addition um, to that school. Timber Trace, also a core expansion. This is an interesting school. It's a, it's. I'll just say it's it's still in it's still in works. Uh, they're actually building an additional uh, front office area to uh, accommodate the. Uh, well, the, you know how this core expansion thing. They they actually uh, uh, have more students now so they need additional spaces like additional nursing areas additional main office areas additional bookkeepers that kind of space so we're building an addition on the front office as well we're um, blowing out and expanding the cafeteria which is on the other side of the building mm -hmm. so at this point um, this school is probably the most in construction while being occupied so we've got we've had a lot of logistical challenges to get this um, this project moving um, but it is coming along what you're seeing right now looks like an open roof it's all been roofed it's all been covered over since since these photos are probably a month old but that school we have been doing construction for three years four years well we did a facility renewal I know we and did then we did something else well we did a security core. project and and now we're doing the core expansion the it, core expansion was funded after well after the fact we didn't it wasn't yeah. part when we were doing the facility renewal I guess I'm just looking at it's a lot of disruption to mm -hmm. the education process to be going in that many times. And are we trying to not do that when we go in to do future projects? Five years ago, um, when we tried to plan this, yeah, we did not have any idea what the scope was going to be when we were doing our facility renewal. Okay. Um, uh, there's a number on our capital. Our capital plan had has all of these ones out in this time because we didn't know what we were going to need and we borrowing and whatnot. So we sorted that out in recent years, Fine. but it was not available because <clears throat> Timber Trace was the first year of facility renewals. Yeah, so. no, I remember that. I know the school well. My daughter went there. And um, <laughs> and Miss Pasquarelli, the principal, has been a, an incredible champ. She's, as you said, she's gone through a lot, but she, <laughs> she keeps it up and um, she's done a, a, a great job of uh, maintaining the spirit of the school. Okay, next. Oh, Seminole Trails. Yeah, there you go. Another one that's well underway um, and probably our second that's uh, been under construction while they're living and uh, moving offices around and such. So, And uh, at this point, uh, minor projects, not a lot going on. We only gave her two slides this time and then some pictures. And what, again, I, you know, I don't want to always tout Dorothy, but if y'all only knew the impact of all her minor projects, when we talk about minor projects, some of her projects are six million dollars, you know, they're not really considered minor, but they're minor in comparison to new schools and, and this and such. Uh, but all the things that she's done and her team, um, all, all I get is, uh, can you get me more people? Because <laughs> We need more people, more money and more vendors. That's our that's our goal in life. If we get Dorothy more people, more money, and more vendors, we're in a much better place. So, um, but again, Dorothy, kudos for all the work that you and, the, and your, I won't even say what we call them, but your team. Uh, there you go. <laughs> yes. Um, that they're doing. Staying on top of it. And the, again, we all know the schools appreciate her things a whole lot more than they do these big things. They, they look at hers as day-to-day -day things that are improved. Yep. So, okay. All That's right. It. Any other questions for Mr. Dolan and the team? Okay, let's do follow up. Anything on follow up that was posted? Uh, David, I have a couple things on follow up. Okay, go ahead, John. Uh, number five there it says provide a detailed cost analysis. This is for the uh, last month's uh, board item FCA. This is pending a future court meeting. <laughs> And I was wondering what the delay is. We and the board were told that there was a cost analysis done, so it should be pretty easy to take off the shelf in the four weeks since the last meeting. Uh, 
But you got we're working on it for the turf. Yes. Yeah. So we so the analysis that was done was done quite a while ago. So we're looking for some up to date information for all the future. At this point, what we looked at was, um, you know, Garcia High is, is done. It's installed. Um, we want to present you a full package of the safety maintenance operating cost that's current to this market right now before we go forward with any other turf projects. So that was our approach. So we're making sure we pull together a, a full package. The cost analysis that was done, uh, we can certainly provide that. It, it's old um, and outdated. So we just wanted to get you better information. Yeah, but I, th I think what we're missing here is that at the last meeting, Michael, I think you had mentioned that uh, AECOM had done kind of their national pricing to compare that the price we were getting for that turf at Garcia was an appropriate price. And gotcha. so the question was, okay, you, I think you mentioned, yeah, we can get you that information. You know, we'll show you what AECOM will come up with. Yeah. So even though those prices are old, I think that's still something we wanted to see just as validation that it wasn't just, you know, okay, we're going to use this company. That's my, no, and we do have that. So we do have a, um, a validation that I can get. I, I apologize. I was talking about the analysis. The overall the, analysis. Oh, yeah. yeah, that, we're going yeah. The that's why I'm like, we're, we, 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 we've been open schools. I don't have time. I know they've been. Um, no, our, no, no. Our, I completely agree I with that. Saying. No, going yeah, yeah. forward, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. And, and if you know, you don't have any GMPs for. So that that uh, information is. I'll get you. I understand what you asked for. I'm sorry. Right. And I think John, that's what you were questioning, right? That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Fine. We'll get that. Uh, info. We do have. Yeah. We're we're looking at it more from the global perspective. <laughs> of, um, oh no, no. I appreciate you for the going forward stuff. Yeah. And as you've said, we're not going to do any fields until that assessment's done. Hey. Correct. Perfect. And I have another thing to, I guess, add to follow up, and that was um, two years ago this month, that would be August of 2021, Cork approved revisions to the contingency use policy. And these are revisions that were proposed by Cork and facility staff in order to have the policy language in agreement with how staff was actually using the contingency use authorizations. And I asked about this last August, a year ago, and was told that the revised policy would have to be submitted to the executive cabinet for approval. Yep. So here we are a year later, I would like to know what has happened in the past two years and whether or not our efforts in modifying the policy are going to be wasted. Uh, no, they are not being wasted. You're absolutely right. Um, there's no one in here other than me. I'm at fault. I need to get it to um, cabinet and we went through this um, with uh, Ms. Hahn. We, we know that we have to take, I have to take it to cabinet and um, yeah, it's, it's unacceptable. It will be done. I, I guarantee you, my boss is probably listening right now. So it will be done before the end of this year. We will take it to cabinet and then it's gonna have to go through two workshops and then go to the board for uh, acceptance. And we will have it done this year. I, I have no no other excuse for the fact that I uh, haven't been able to do so and um, okay should be able to do so um, rapidly. You can toast on New Year's, John. <laughs> Knock on wood. I'll have it done before then, but we're working towards it. Anything else? Anybody else on follow-up? No, that's it. Okay. Uh, date of the next Cork meeting, make sure you note September 7th. Um, <clears throat> we're down to 502. This is something I had mentioned, I think, at the last meeting, and I said I wanted to have a discussion since I've been on Cork, I don't know, 22 years, I think. Um, it, as an architect, it's always kind of been of interest to me as to what our schools look like, because I think all buildings have a personality. And to me, all buildings kind of speak to the public as to what we think of in terms of design or the feelings that buildings give. Uh, I wasn't particularly pleased with what I saw from the addition that was done at Delray Full Service. But it seems like there is no policy and maybe, I don't know if staff has, Dave, time in if you want, has a lot of leverage over an architect for whatever they might want to design. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if 
the architect is hired, says, here's your program, go design this building. They come back with a design. Maybe it meets the budget, maybe it doesn't. And I don't know if there's anything in place right now where we have any potential restrictions to tell an architect, no, I'm sorry, that's unacceptable. So, in, and I can add to that. So, in, in Delray's case, we, we have um, George, who's a licensed architect. Yeah. We want to have a licensed architect with that experience and qualifications and um, education to be able to look at that. Because there's some subjectivity to that, but there's also some science behind that, as you know. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, Delray went through, we did not have that position on board. Uh, we have that position in house now that actively looks at all the designs and makes comments and reviews them. Um, from a design standpoint. So we don't do it by a committee, but we do have staff members that look at that and um, provide feedback all the way through from schematic all the way through. Right, and but there's again, leadership, I'm... there's also a leadership component to it that leadership is getting presented or now is getting presented design, you know, nearing completion designs to um, review that, again, people that are, are not necessarily registered architects, but it doesn't the, matter. Leaders of the school. Tom Berger may have to leave. Oh, okay. His hand raised. Tom Berger, hand up. You got to go? I got to go. Okay, we have a quorum still. Thanks, Tom. Sorry, David, for leaving. No, no, no. That's okay. No Bye -bye. problem. Thank you. So, I, I understand that, Michael, but do we have any leverage to, other than just stop paying the architect and then have a breach of contract to say, no, your design's oh. unacceptable, and they won't come back and change it, saying, no, this is my creativity. You live with it. What leverage do we have? I don't know. I'd have to look dig into the contracts, but all of the architects that we work with work with us on that and want to do a good job so that we well, haven't I, had an issue. But And I agree I, that they, yeah. if they want the next job, yes, well, I agree with that. But also we have to sign off on each of their, their levels of, uh, you know, their, their schematics. And so their we don't TDs. move on to the next phase. We don't phase move on to the next phase. We're not happy with it. Yeah. Maybe that's even a contract question that we need to just look at the contracts and see if we have any leverage to have a design say and say, no, I'm sorry, you won't change and you're not getting paid. Um, and, and believe me, I have been on long enough mm -hmm. to know that this has not been a chronic problem. Mm -hmm. But I mean, Dorothy, just flip through what I put together here. I mean, these are just random school designs that if we don't have restrictions, we could end up with some of these things. Just keep flipping. Get, just go all the way through the same speed. I mean, these are from all over the place. They're schools. <laughs> they're maybe interesting. They're bizarre. They all have personalities. Some are nice. Some are not nice. Um, again, that's personal preference. Oh, don't criticize that one. Doesn't that mean? I, I didn't. I'm not saying positive or negative any of these. I mean, because some of these are fabulous. Some of these are ours. I was say we just passed by. Right? Yeah, <laughs> I know. Um, but again, when you flip through these, it's kind of a volume of personalities that oh, the buildings present. That's a really nice one. And that's what brought <laughs> this whole conversation up. It's just like, really? Why? You know, I, you know? Why don't we have any br brutalistic uh, architecture here? That was my favorite of all time. I know. <laughs> Nothing like walking along a building and scraping against it and having your whole body sandpapered. Yep. <laughs> uh, Mr. Dolan, Mr. Porter, um, uh, if I may say to the point is uh, it's different municipalities of different cities have a development re re review committee that they want the city to look at. Downtown West Palm, downtown Boca, downtown Palm Beach Gardens, they all have these different uh, styles of architecture that they want to use in those areas so maybe the school board could have a certain style of architecture or range that well i think that you it's a very good point that the challenge being is that uh boca's view of what our school might be is definitely a different one than palm beach gardens view of what our school should be so yeah i think it, it will have to be regionalized or localized um you know if if something like that you have to meet local city ordinance uh, well, the cities have site planning approval. I think that's all the cities have is site planning approval. But so provide an elevation. You also have. Uh, and I, no. Okay. I don't believe you have you to all do can exterior say that. image, but they can hold your site plan up for eight months, well, and, a year. And they can also make it's leverage political challenge on our inability to work with that agency. That that. Okay. 
town city. You know, turn lanes. I mean, it, 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 you, you've been in the business. You you know that some and different department will make it hard on you if they want their five way. Five years when you want your your digital marquee approved, <laughs> and they and they light you up for it, and they make you go through challenges and whatnot. That hasn't happened, but that kind of thing. It, it doesn't necessarily have to be that they reject it and pr prevent you from building. It's it's we're we're always trying to, and I know Chris Garrison oftentimes is on these meetings. Uh, Chris does a great job of trying to maintain our relationships with all of those agencies. Mm -hmm. She's part of the League of Cities. You have to. She knows you everybody. Don't get built. Um, we try to be good neighbors. We try to be good partners with all these agencies um, so that we do, while we may not necessarily be obligated to comply with their requests, we certainly um, weigh in with them. Uh, Blue Lake is a perfect example. Uh, the city of Boca Raton was so gracious as to give us land. Well, we're going to be like, no, we don't care what you want. <laughs> so we actually had opportunities to work with them and make sure that they were kind of okay with, with what we were going. Not, knock on wood, we haven't had any of those controversies yeah. where, where they say, heck no, but we're quite comfortable that um, if we manage our relationships with these agencies, we can build a good school, a school that um, stands national, you know, main, can maintain national standing and still be in compliance with the, the local vernacular. And that was one of the other things I was going to say is a lot of these architects that we work with, I mean, we're the 10th largest school district in the country. We recognize that what we put out is not just about what's good for the community, but also cutting edge. I mean, that's, I think, yeah. knock on wood, I, I think uh, Garcia High School is going to win awards when, yeah. you know, that's, now it's open, mm -hmm. uh, when, when that goes forward. That's world, you know, nationwide, that's now going to be a, a, a huge play. So weighing in as to just a group of people that want color, you know, a certain type of color. Um, there's a lot of things that would go into that. And I think it's it's a lot more than just a, a small select group of people. That's why I say like leadership will certainly play a role in uh, regardless of how we go forward of what all of our schools will look like. I just wanted to know that we had kind of a policing, uh, you know, ability mm -hmm. so that we get creativity, not arbitrariness. Um, I look at what we was do. done for Delray Full Service is arbitrary. Um, that design, uh, you know, it's just like, okay, why? But you look at some of the other ones like uh, Meisner. Meisner had a very purposeful, you know, historical reference design that to me is not arbitrary at all. It is architecturally compatible with what was there, with the community. Mm -hmm. um, so again, all buildings have personality. Mm -hmm. This tells the public what our school district believes in a building, uh, in architecture, in making a community. So mm -hmm. that's all I was looking for. If yep. We have George on board and, yep. you know, George retires and we get a George replacement and we have the authority to, you know, because selection committee, we may get some other new architect coming in here over the years that we've mm -hmm. never worked with before and they get a project and then they think they need to make their statement. And, you know, Delray Full Service is a little bit that way because that was an architect we hadn't worked with before. And we've had that. We've had that on uh, on Roosevelt, historic Roosevelt, the uh, the phase one. The architect came in, great, great architect. They do a wonderful job. And their first draft, A, was way outside of the budget of what we could build, but it was all glass enclosed. And we went, whoa, that's not going to fit with what we're doing. So, yeah, I mean, then our team, and by the way, just for the record, so if George is on here, George, you're not allowed to retire, so don't even think of it. Um, but yeah, no, our, our team will, will okay. play a very active role in what goes on. And uh, even even you and I, if we think we know what, what's right, it may not necessarily be the final answer of what's right. It's so, okay. I mean, it, yeah. again, it just needs to be what our, as a district, our philosophy should be towards yes, architecture. Sir. And, you know, all the buildings that we've done other than Delray full service to me, I think are commendable. Um, and again, personal opinion. Some I may look at that one thinking, oh, what an artist piece. Let, let me build out the rest of it. Let me put the landscaping in. Let me, because right you now you looked at a stark picture of a yeah, but our, land, our landscaping no budget, no site, no. our landscaping budgets afford two sable palms. <laughs> That's not going to hide that. Let, let, let me, let me build how about, it how out. How about a 30 foot high hedge? <laughs>
Okay. All right. Anybody else with any comments or questions on this? Okay, good. <laughs> Don't stay there. Don't stay. <laughs> this is going to end there. You're just going to do this just to take me off, aren't you? Yeah. Just lay it off. Frank. Frank. Mr. Simon. I thought that was Frank. Yeah, was it? Raise the sand. Okay. Maybe just hit the button by mistake. Okay, approval of the minutes. Anyone with issues with the minutes? Virginia's not here today because uh, she texted me yesterday saying she came back from a cruise that was absolutely horrible and caught COVID. So she didn't think she'd uh, make it up for, and she's in Vancouver still to uh, be a part of the meeting this morning. So she's usually the one that hits our minutes. So we'll assume the minutes are acceptable then. Okay. Nobody's raising a hand. Uh, anything we got for the next meeting? I guess the only thing so far would be bring us forward those Cost, cost analysis for the Garcia field. Yeah, I feel, yes, absolutely. Uh, I don't think we've mentioned anything else today. Garthy, is there anything lingering in follow-up that hasn't come back to us that you know of? Mm, I don't think Because I think you usually at the end of the minutes keep track of those things. I do. That's, that's follow-up, yeah. That's why he we'll have me. number three in updates next week for our bi-monthly. Um, okay, good. Frank. Frank, Simon. Did I ever get on? No, you're on the, you, you disconnected yourself and now you're back on and now we can hear, hear and see you. Okay, did, that, did I make my own speech? Okay. No, we didn't hear anything. We didn't hear anything. We're now okay. hearing you for the first time. What I wanted to say was, I agree 100% that we have to be concerned with exterior appearance. I think we also have to be <coughs> concerned with some of the interior design, auditoriums, and cafeterias particularly, classrooms are a little bit locked in. But also, we have to be very concerned with hurricane proof yeah, and flooding, and those things become major, major issues that we can ignore. That's well, we take we take care of the hurricanes now because the building code requires that. And when we do a high school, is Garcia considered a shelter? Uh, no, it is not. Not okay because we don't have to right. on high schools now. But right. flooding, as far as flooding, we're taking care of because <laughs> FEMA, FEMA requires FEMA. that you have to get the slabs up. I have to do that with a house now. Yes. yes. So, you know, if FEMA's right, then we shouldn't have flooding for new things getting built. But he, but his, to Mr. Simon's point. Um, you know, we go through you guys, we've talked through with Mr. Hogarth and he presents to you on the different types of roof systems that we're gonna employ. You know, are there ones that are more more likely to have problems in the short term and things like that so that we don't end up having some of those crazy ideas that might end up being future leak problems. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we are a very practical, pragmatic group above all else. So, because we know that we're gonna be the ones that are uh, expected to respond to the maintenance um, when it when it uh, doesn't work out so well. So yeah. we, but we do appreciate that those those me measures need to be addressed. Michael Thanks, Gelfand, uh, I think you're muted. You're muted, Michael. Unmute. Aren't you the lucky ones? Thank you for asking. Me. <laughs> <laughs> we could have let you speak the whole time and then told you to unmute. So we were kind. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, as we're looking at architecture, uh, the need to anticipate retrofitting to place perimeter security. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yep, that's right. Okay. That's going to okay. be one. Uh, just a note for the next meeting, I am attending the Florida Bar Board of Governors meetings. If it's uh, that Thursday, I think it's the 10th or 11th, so I likely will not be able to attend. Okay. For all right, marked you down for an excused absence. Thank you. Okay, anything by anyone? All right, then, thank you. We are adjourned. Thank you all.